Well, hello, friends. <laughs> About those people that you thought were friends. You don't realize who the real friends are until you encounter some kind of uh, difficulty or barrier or something where one or the other of you needs help in something. Uh, <laughs> I, uh, I have recently, <laughs> and I wouldn't even use the word alienated. I just, uh, not sure what the word is. We'll see if we can figure it out by the time I get through <laughs> telling this story. But, uh, so I, uh, I've been doing these YouTube videos, audios actually, and uh, it's a mix, mixture, mix of fact and fiction. <laughs> and uh, so my first friend, we'll call him uh, S. <laughs> and he has a wife, and we'll call her J. And uh, she was apparently offended by the shock jock nature of some of the first videos I've done. I've done a thousand of them now. Uh, they're not all on YouTube, only about, I don't know, 300 or something. But uh, so, of course, you can imagine. Jay is telling Scott, oh, S. Yes. <laughs> Your friend is a fucking maniac. He sounds like he's crazy. <laughs> well, Jay, it's called creative writing. <laughs> Draw upon real life. And I have uh, very thoroughly mixed real life experiences. And sometimes some of these things are uh, 90 plus percent my real life and then i throw in some stuff to make it a little more interesting you know this is a true story some of the characters may have had their ch names changed and some of the details may have been amplified <laughs> so anyway uh, first friend you know like 10 12 years whatever Oh, he disowned me. <laughs> I managed to, uh, and I'm not going to use the word alienated because I don't think it's appropriate. But he misunderstood and he was pressured by Jay. <laughs> so just for being a creative writer, which is kind of a sudden occurrence uh, for people who saw you as simply a teacher. I was a teacher for ever and ever and ever. And they didn't know that I've been writing creatively since I was 12 years old. I'm not successful, but I've been doing it. <laughs> I've written a couple of books. So uh, surprise, surprise, surprise. So when they uh, accessed my stuff on YouTube, it was like, Whoa, he sounds, woo hoo hoo Scott, don't hang out with him. Don't hang out with him. He sounds crazy. Fuck you. So there's Scott. <laughs> now Mike, Mike M. Well, excuse me, let's backtrack and erase the word. Let's go back to M. Another friend of mine, M. <laughs> We've known each other forever. I mean, ever. So I would I would say uh, thirty five years. And M can't stand to be under the control of anything. He just no rules for him. He wants to do what he wants to do all the time, and that's it. You know, that's a common characteristic 
uh, I, I suffer it quite a bit, but he, uh, he was over one night and, and we bought a gun. <laughs> He's uh, trying to talk me into buying a gun. And we were drunk, and so we got online. I said, well, yeah, I like that gun. I'd like to buy that gun. He said, okay, well, let's just buy it. <laughs> so we bought it, but we bought it under his name for me. So I can't sell the gun. Now I have this gun that I don't really want. And I've been asking him for two years, hey, just uh, pick the gun up and take it down there and, you know, put it in the shop and sell it, would you? Two years. Two years. And I finally went off on it. I said, hey, dude, I've been asking you for two years to sell this gun. And that was all it took. Friend number two out the door. You know, can't even take the slightest criticism. <laughs> then my neighbor, my neighbor, Josh, uh, Jay, Jay, let's backtrack, Jay. So Jay, he's one of those guys that just has no integrity. He grew up with no moral code, I guess, which is crazy because he was supposed to be a preacher or something. He was studying for that. and uh, But he uh, constantly borrows things and <laughs> he borrows, quote unquote, anything I've ever loaned, quote unquote, to him. I had to chase down <laughs> and then I was lucky to get it back. And I can't count the number of things that he's borrowed and never brought back. I have to chase them down. Most recently, he borrowed a compressor of mine. <laughs> and he fucked it up. And I, he said, yeah, I'm going to bring your compressor back. So I took him my house keys and I, the key to the garage and I said, hey, here, uh, I'm, I'm going to go hang with some friends. Here are the keys. Just uh, put the compressor in the garage and drop the keys off in the house. I leave the side door open all the time. <laughs> well, compressor shows up a couple of days later left outside the garage all fucked up all fucked up no explanation josh didn't come and tell me jay jay didn't come and tell me oh we did this to your compressor and we did that to your compressor. i don't even know how long he had it And so I told him, I, I, you know, I said, hey, you know, when you borrow something, you return it in the same condition it was in when you borrowed it. And then I said, and I'm disappointed that you just dropped it off outside my garage. You didn't even bother to tell me you fucked it up. And now I can't use it. Oh, boy. <laughs> And I was actually nicer than that. I didn't use any F words. I just said I was disappointed that you didn't tell me, you know, that uh, something had been broken. And I mean, and now Jay is another friend who I no longer have. Boy, friends are fragile. They are fragile little motherfuckers, aren't they? You can't criticize them at all. 
But that's a good thing. That's a good thing. Because do you really want to hang out with people that have no integrity, no moral strength, no ethics, and they're fucking weak, weak of mind. I think it's a good thing. Problem is, there's so few of those people. I mean, I've got it whittled down to two. <laughs> two people who I can be honest with 100% of the time and say, hey man, that wasn't right. You shouldn't have done that. And we work it out. So I still have two. But all the rest had just fallen away. They're fucking pussies. No integrity. No ethics. And I guess it may be this age. You know, so I'm a... I'm 63 now. And I guess uh, some of these people are my age. Some of them are a generation younger. But I'll tell you what, that younger generation, those fuckers have problems. They've grown up in a world that has just given them nothing in the way of how to be responsible for yourself. So there it is. And I guess uh, the frustration is, uh, man, I mean, it reminds me of uh, what my parents, grandparents said. You know, oh man, things are going downhill pretty quickly, Lee. And um, it seems they're continuing to go downhill. I don't know. I, I think we're at a point now where when uh, nobody takes responsibility for their own actions and they're unwilling to own up to mistakes they made, what's next? It's surely not a world that's going to function well. You got a bunch of fucking worthless fucking pussies trying to take what they can. You know, to, I, I would describe the current generation here of people as, well, if I can get away with it, okay. That's where we're at. We got a generation of people that think if they can get away with it, fantastic. So that's just a few. Thank God I still have my brothers to count on. They didn't grow up in this pussy generation. No ethics, no moral code. Next time.